Hey guys, Drifter here. Check out this airplane gameplay in multiplayer in Call of Duty World War II. This is a rare one. I haven't seen stuff like this since playing with the tanks in World at War or with the very final DLC for Black Ops 3 where you could pick up the mechs and stomp them around. I recorded this at Sledgehammer Games. Thank you Activision for the flights and hotel rooms. And I wanted to show off the airplane game first because it's by far the most interesting hypey part of Operation Husky which is the new war mode but it is a little bit out of order. The airplanes are what you get at the very end. You have to play the entire match to earn the airplanes so to speak and the rest of it is more like a traditional war map. But let's talk about the airplanes. Controls are surprisingly simple and fluid. Your left stick up and down is going to control how fast or slow your airplane uh, flies, therefore changing your turning radius and ratios. Left stick also does rolls and some additional movement, whereas right stick is going to be your pitch and yaw controls. So it's pretty intuitive, pretty straightforward, and you'll get a hang of it very, very quickly. And like most other airplane games, you aim just by pointing your nose at the enemies and pulling the trigger, so you have to fly your airplane directly at an enemy. The bullets are straight hit scans. They don't have any leading. I was kind of trying to lead my shots like I was playing Battlefield, and that was just completely unnecessary. They're very simple hit scans, so just put the crosshairs on people, pull the right trigger to shoot, and you'll kill them surprisingly fast. Left trigger will zoom in as well and change the auto aim range a bit, and just give you better vision on your enemy so do use that left trigger to zoom in and pop some people your health doesn't seem to regenerate when your airplane takes damage it doesn't have that magic wolverine health like call of duty your engine damage is permanent because of that the kill streaks that you get in the air and yes you do get air kill streaks are very easy to earn you would think if you get three kills in a row on either the american or german side you can call in an american fighter pilot to assist your team or call in german flat cannons which just blow up a ton of people right out of the air. They're very frustrating to play against in my opinion. And three kills in a row seems very easy, but given the fact that the damage you take is permanent, you have to play very conservatively to earn these kills, and you win the dogfighting mode simply as team deathmatch. It's a uh, battle of attrition. You have a certain number of lives left, and they count down, and whoever runs out of fighter pilots loses the game. The airplane mode is neat, but it's a bit underwhelming after the first couple times you play it. It's more like ending the map with a mini game than it is a fully fleshed out mode, but hey, at this point, anything new and good is fun because the rest of the war map is like a traditional war map and if you go through all the steps and do all the things and win enough you get this neat little airplane mini game at the end at least how I see it and the rest of Operation Husky is it's traditional war but it's a little bit stranger because you sneak in and slit a guy's throat which is kind of a cool start and then you have to steal intel from an enemy base three of them bring them back to your base this is if you're allied after that, you go to a house and you have to control the radio in the house to send the intel to your fighter pilots before they can engage the airplane and bombers at the end. Offense gets free Molotov cocktails. You can pick them up off spawn. They go in a kill streak slot and they respawn kind of frequently. Some, I mean, if your teammates hog them all, you might not get them, but there's enough to go around. You won't be missing too many. You throw them in windows or enemies at you as you see fit. However, the defense gets a much better prize. They get free trip wires that they pick up after their spawn. The trip wires are very easy to set up. They have uh, red if you can't place them and blue if you can. You can place them at most any flat surface, and you can place them at any height. Obviously, you can do chad, head or face or chest height or whatever, but my personal favorite is to just put them super, super low on the ground especially in a dark corner or something so they're kind of hard to see and they're really strong they blow up they have a huge radius they deal a ton of damage I think they even killed armored users if you get hit by a tripwire you are going to die however they can be disabled by grenades if you're worried if there's a tripwire in the game you can throw in a satchel charge or just bounce a couple grenades in blow them up and then you're clear to go in and you can walk over your own tripwire and die. I found out from a friend, I most certainly did not walk over my own tripwire and die. Definitely didn't happen two or three times, so do keep in mind where you place them. It's my opinion that defense... <clears throat> It's my opinion that the defenders have a super huge advantage in almost every part of the map except for the very last part. In the initial part, they can camp in windows and look down at you, and you have to push across an open street. Every single part that you fight them is an open area. It's very difficult to get close to them. They can shoot down at you from the windows from everywhere, and it's it's just kind of hard to push up. If you do push up, you then have to push through a bunch of trip mines and then have to go do close quarters combat in small rooms where they can camp and hide 
around corners and just shoot you with shotguns and stuff. It's really hard to get into the defender's area in the first part. But that's not what makes it so bad. What makes it so bad is that on their side of the map, looking at you, there's a lot of unusual nooks and crannies and corners around the offender spawn to where it doesn't do them any you know, benefit or give them any advantage to hide in, but defenders can push into your spawn and sit there with a silent SMG or, you know, suppressed akimbo pistols, kind of like I have, or shotguns or something, and hide in those nooks and crannies and corners and control the offense spawn very, very well. So they get a massive advantage in the first part. In the second part of the map, they have an elevated position again. They spawn very closely. One of the spawns is around a corner that you can't attack them from. The other spawn is around a corner that you can't attack them from, and the final spawn is from an elevated position that's very difficult to attack them from. So they can spawn and move in to control the zone that you're supposed to control very easily and quickly. Offense is super hard. You have to fight against all of that, and yeah, you get free Molotovs and stuff, but in my opinion, you have to work super hard with your team. You have to use tacticals, you have to use smoke, you have to use stun grenades, you have to use lethals to break up all the tripwires and stuff. And spawn control on the last point is especially important because the enemy spawns so close, you have to have something that controls the spawn or they're literally just going to walk in and murder you. It is not easy to do on offense. However, if you work hard on offense, your reward is the airplane minigame. Guys, that is all for my thoughts and opinions on Operation Husky. I hope you enjoyed the airplane gameplay, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the gameplay. I'm going to kick it over to some raw gameplay now and uh, head back to PAX. Drifter out. Intel! Intel acquired! One minute until enemy reinforcements! Intel captured! Two more to go! Let's go, soldiers! Get the intel! Intel dropped! We picked up Intel! All Intel has been acquired! Nice work, soldiers! We need to transmit the target coordinates to HQ to relay to our bombers! Let's move! Incoming! Enemy is down! Transmitting coordinates! Enemy flamethrower on the battlefield! Don't get cooked! I got, I got. Soldiers, get those coordinates transmitted! Latitude, 13 degrees, 20 minutes, 14 minutes. Stick to the objective. Move it. Target location Bravo, 38 degrees, 7 minutes, 47.6 
Get those coordinates transmitted! Until our reinforcements get here. Sending the coordinates! One minute until enemy reinforcements! Coordinates are being transmitted! Transmitting coordinates! Target locations over Palermo. We need to clear the airspace of enemy fighters to allow them safe passage. Take out the enemy fighters! Destroy one of our fighters! 